get into it, let's, um, let's look to our Father in heaven and say a quick word of prayer. Holy, 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 holy is our Father. Holy is our Father up above. Holy, holy, holy is your name. Father, you sit on your throne. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the King of Kings. You are the Alpha, the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are my Creator. You are the one who formed me. You were the one who knew me before I was born. Father, this moment I thank you for all that you've done in my life. I thank you for the opportunity to come here and glorify your name, Father God. My life is nothing without you, Lord. Father, without you, I would not be here. And so as I continue on, Father God, let this be raw, let this be transparent, let this be all that you want it to be. May every single word that comes out of my mouth be words that you want your people to hear, Lord. I want nothing more, nothing less, Father God. May your light shine through. I thank you, Jesus, for what you've done, and I thank you, Lord, that you've given me another day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Here we are in my home. We're here in Milpitas, California. I, I, I'm I, so happy to be doing this finally. I just celebrated my 25th birthday this month and my wife got me an awesome camera. So it doesn't seem like a better time to be doing this. And she's created such a beautiful home for us. So I'm super comfortable. I'm just gonna lay back and speak to you all. Uh, share my testimony. I haven't shared my testimony much with too many people. I've just briefly uh, mentioned bits and pieces of my past as I've, you know, had conversations with certain people in different situations, but I've never kind of put it all out there from beginning to end. So I'm hoping I don't make this too long, uh, but I'm hoping that I cover enough to where um, you are, you all are hopefully inspired and um, see everything that God has done in and through me. And you know, I'll just start here in California. I was born and raised in San Jose. Uh, my parents uh, both raised me on the east side of San Jose. Me and my sister grew up together um, in a little home, uh, definitely in a ghetto neighborhood. <laughs> I would hear the helicopter going off every other night. There was always a stabbing or a shooting twice a month, uh, which seemed crazy and it's even crazier to think that it was just a normal thing. I grew up going to public school all throughout high school and I've seen a lot of things, you know, I've done a lot of things, hung out with certain crowds that I definitely shouldn't be hanging out with, uh, shouldn't have been hanging out with. and. You know, rewinding it all back to when I was growing up, uh, I was about 12 years old. I guess we'll start there. Uh, 12 years old is when I had my first drink. 12 years old was when I had my first sexual experience. 12 years old was when I smoked weed for the first time. And I'm going to title this message or um, title this video, uh, Drugs, Women, and Alcohol. The reason I'm gonna probably title it that is because growing up, my mom would always tell me something. She would say, son, if you don't control drugs, the drugs, the women, and the alcohol in your life, they're gonna ruin you. I would constantly have my mom's voice playing in my head every single time I would find myself in situations um, throughout life. When I was 12 years old, I 
I had my first drink at home. I opened the bottle that my dad had in the counter and being so curious, I, 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 uh, I wanted to just take a drink like I would see my dad and my uncles and my grandparents take. And that was the beginning of something that was going to unravel and eventually become my rock bottom. Being 12 years old and having my first sexual encounter was the beginning of something that was going to be the most, uh, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna say uh, the biggest heartbreak, and, and truly it was, and it's not a type of heartbreak that, uh, I, I don't know, you might think of right off the bat. It was, it was truly something very dark. It wasn't a heartbreak like you know, I got rejected type of thing, or um, I got dumped. It was the type of heartbreak where my heart became so hard um, to the point where I didn't trust anybody, and I was so dark. I was in such a dark place uh, to where I just had lost all hope and love. And, you know, I uh, then got into drugs, um, one thing led to another and uh, I got into doing a lot of cocaine in certain situations, whether it was bars or um, the restaurants that I would work at or uh, just out and about. And I knew that when I was doing those drugs, it was really the, it was really the last straw to me being able to hold on. I knew that I was, in a really bad place and that I needed to get out. I didn't know how else to get out except for to go to my mom's house and eventually just fall at her knees and say, Mom, I need you, I need your help. And I remember it was, I believe, Easter Sunday of 2016. And, you know, after that day, I um, moved out of the apartment that I was living at and I moved back into my mom's house and she had my room set up for me to just come home and not have to uh, deal with the stress of working so much so that I can pay my bills and um, having to just be out and figuring things out at such a young age. I was 21 at the time and this was uh, after I had gone out and just slept around and just lived a wicked life and just gotten so drunk night after night, driving home drunk, getting arrested because I was sitting drunk in my car one night uh, in the city of Morgan Hill. And, um, you know, like I said, um, leading up to this point where I finally go to my mom's and I say, mom, I, I, I just need your help. I don't know what else to do. I start to get my life back together as I moved back into my mom's house and you know I start where I know where to start is just I guess getting my health back together and starting to work out again. I left the drugs, I left the alcohol, I stopped sleeping around with women and I started to uh, look at my life and kind of assess everything and where I was at that moment. I realized it had been four years after high school and I had nothing to show for this time that had passed. Uh, I had no money. I had um, no direction. I thought I knew what I wanted to do, but it was, it turned out to be just, you know, the worst thing that I could have uh, been involved with, which was, you know, opening my own restaurant um, and just grow, going on that venture. Uh, it was just too much for me. But it's amazing how God has brought me back and, and, and now he's showing me the right way to do it, but that's a different story. Anyways, I was uh, starting to get my life back together, starting to work out again. Uh, I started to feel so amazing. My diet was on point. Uh, my circle was clean. Uh, as far as like my friends and, and the people that I would uh, hang around with. I started to apply to school. 
um, I went to San Jose Community College and I started to play football for them and it was just an amazing year and while I was playing football I had um, I had uh, been playing with the with the old buddy of mine and we were locker buddies and he tells me one Tuesday night that he was going to go to a young adults uh, church and he told me I should come along and so nothing else to do on a Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. so I decided to go and as, I, as soon as I walked through the doors I knew it was it was home I knew it was some place that I wanted to be I knew it was I knew that it was a divine appointment for me I ended up rededicating my life to Jesus Christ that night and when I say rededicating um, I was about 21 um, at the time when I rededicated my life so I'll reverse back to when I was 18 years old. When I was 18 years old, I woke up one morning and the Holy Spirit kind of tugged on me to go to church. And I went to the only church that I knew to go to, which was uh, St. Francis Church in, uh, off San Felipe Road on, in San Jose. And it was a Catholic church. And so I go at 8.30 in the morning. I, I go online. I see that there's a mass at 8.30. So I go and um, I show up. Um, realized that I'm the youngest one there. Everyone else is like a senior, like everyone was senior citizens. And so I stand in the back and I'm kind of just standing against the wall, looking around, scoping the place out and kind of observing everything. And I realized that um, it was, uh, yeah, it was a senior, it was a senior service mass type of thing. I just remember really liking it and enjoying it. I remember just feeling so called to just continue to go. And there was apparently a 8.30 mass every single day. So I would get in my car and I would go every single morning. And soon enough, I started to catch on um, as far as like the routine and, and, and the whole service structure. I started to catch on to the songs. I started to catch on to the prayers and um, pretty soon I ended up um, sticking around after service and doing my own prayer time and I developed such a beautiful prayer life and I was just praying to God and I was praying for everything and I realized that I would sit I would I would get on my knees at the altar and um, at first I was you know praying for a minute or two and eventually I would pray for several minutes and it got to the point where I was praying so long and for so many things that you know, uh, I realized everyone had left the building and I was the last one there. And I just, I, I was so not proud, but I was just feeling God. I was just, I was feeling God and I was feeling so good about it because I knew that he was listening to me. I would see things happen around my life. I would see his glory just falling upon me. I would see the blessings falling around me and I would see how pleased, uh, how pleased God was. Uh, with me just coming to him as a son. I wasn't doing anything. I, I, I actually was walking in integrity. I can honestly say that I was 18 years old. I was just walking in true integrity and I could see God's glory and his blessings just falling upon my life. And it, 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 prayer was just addicting. It was so, I, I was just baking in it. I was just dwelling in that place. And I was 18 years old, go to a Catholic church, develop my prayer life. Well, one morning, I miss 8.30 service. It was a Sunday morning. So I go online and I got to look for another church because I need to get to church today. I type in churches in San Jose and Cathedral of Faith comes up. It's one of the first churches that comes up and there's a 10 p.m. mass or service. And so I make my way to Cathedral of Faith. I had no idea what to expect. I just know that I'm going to go to church. I'm going to listen to the word. I'm going to uh, maybe sing some songs and I'm going to pray. I had no idea that I was walking into a Christian church for the first time and the atmosphere was just incredible. The building itself was beautiful, it's magnificent. Uh, the auditorium was awesome. The message was just, uh, I mean, it was just, uh, I don't know why I think of the word seasoned. It was just seasoned. It was so good. It, uh, it was just really good and I loved it. That service, they made an altar call. And it was the first time I've ever seen an altar call be done. 
they talk about this man, Jesus, the Son of God, the God that I had been praying to for so many months before. And they talk about the kind of love that He has for you, the type of love that He was willing to give His life for us. Even when we were still sinners, He loved us enough to die for us. And, and He took our cross, He took our place. And so I'm bawling and I'm walking to the altar covered in tears. It's the type of cry that is just so freeing and just so, just so impactful. It's just at the core. And I give my life to Christ that day. Well, I started going back to that church and you know, the, the weeks go by and the weeks go by and, and this is something very important that I've, I want to share. I was doing this by myself. I never went to church with anybody. No one ever told me to go. It was just something that the Holy Spirit imparted in me to, to kind of take upon myself and, and, and walk this path. And that was the hardest thing. And if anybody's watching this, I, I strongly encourage you to get community because what I'm about to say next is what kind of led me down a downward spiral is I, I was doing this all on my own and I had no one to teach me how to how to read my Bible or how to walk this this path as, as, a, as a Christian man, this narrow path. And I had no mentors, I had no guidance. It was just kind of me doing it by myself. And, and now that I'm even processing this, I realized that I had set, I still have such a huge calling in my life, and at the time when I was just a, 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 a baby believer, the enemy saw the impact that God was making, and he just sent his generals out to completely kill, steal, and destroy anything that I had built. And me being a new believer, I was too vulnerable to it. The temptations... Um, the lifestyle, the desires, it was just all too much. And so I ended up falling. I ended up backsliding after I got saved that first time at the Cathedral of Faith. And that's kind of what led me down that downward spiral of just working seven days a week, 14 hour days, getting drunk all the time, sleeping around with women, doing drugs. It led me down that downward spiral. And so going back to me, going back to my mom's and getting my life together, going to play football, getting introduced to this church encounter, this young adults church in, in uh, South San Jose. I go to this young adults church and I rededicate my life to Christ. I rededicate my life to Christ. The fire that was once inside of me has been reignited and here I am being rooted at this church. I jump right into serving. I'm serving six, seven days a week. I'm involved in everything. I'm putting on events. I'm praying over men. I'm encouraging people. I'm talking to the pastor at, in his home. He's teaching me how to read my Bible. He's showing me the, the, the path that I'm on. And, and I'm going to leadership retreats. And it's just amazing. And my roots are growing so much. And I meet so many new friends and so many awesome people that, have, that are still walking strong beside me. And, and, it, and it becomes the best experience that 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 I've had up until that point it, it's the best life that I could ever live up until that point you know there's so much more that I want to say there's so much more that, that that's in my story there's so many more downfalls and so many more high points and so many more valleys and so many more mountains but I, I want to skip all that and just fast forward to the best thing that has happened to me up until, up until now. And that's meeting my wife. Meeting my wife was God ordained. Um, she started going to the same church, uh, FCC encounter uh, that I was going to and Eventually we ended up meeting and we started off as friends and actually she had a boyfriend and I was seeing somebody and it was uh, It was just incredible how God ended up uh, bringing us together and um, I broke things off with this girl and eventually my wife uh, broke up with her boyfriend at the time and 
and we ended up coming together in a, in, a, in the perfect time and as we started to express our feelings to each other we realized that God was calling us to much more than just being friends or just being acquaintances or being boyfriend and girlfriend. God definitely put it on our hearts to come together in a holy matrimony and you know it was it was so clear to the both of us and the way that everything happened was just God's hand over us and it was just undeniable there's so many little bits and pieces to the story and how it all happened but that's the gist of it and fast forward to now coming home um, being in this home I, I just want to give glory to God for everything He's brought me through. I was such an alcoholic. But God showed me how ugly and how dark that life was and how empty it was and how um, temporary that drink was. I was drinking to escape all my issues. I was drinking to forget. I was drinking to not have to deal with my problems or think about them. And it was such a temporary fix. And he showed me that having peace in God was the ultimate satisfaction. Having peace that he's in control of everything going on in my life, my finances, my relationships, my job, my future, my career, my calling, everything else. It's in his hands. And I don't want to drink and I don't want to consume something that's going to allow me to forget that fact is that God's in control. Drugs, cocaine was easy to let go because, I mean, I wasn't ever addicted to it. It was just something that I was doing because you know, of all the other things, I was out and I was drinking and then the cocaine is just something you add on top of all that. So getting away from all that just got me away from the drugs, the hard drugs. But smoking weed was another thing that um, I was getting to to just get high. Um, I, I just wanted to, to just be lazy and relax and not pursue the things that God has called me to because you reminded me of... Um, the verse in Luke that says to who much is given much is required and he put that verse on my heart so heavy one day and it was just feeling like a lot of pressure and a lot of weight and the calling just came with so much and every time that I would sit back and I would be on a couch smoking weed getting high I was escaping all that responsibility and I was escaping all all of that and I was just sitting back and I was just living a good life an easy life an easy life and that's not what God calls us to. And so I had to be inspired again. I had to uh, be reminded and, and I needed some hard reality checks to, to remind me that, hey, I'm calling you to something great and you need to get off your butt. You need to put that joint down and you need to get to work. Um, women was the hardest thing that I had to let go because um, not because I was so attracted to these women, not because I was so lustful. It was more deeper than that. Um, it was all those things, but it was much deeper. Um, I realized that I was hooking up with so many women because I was so insecure for one. I was so depressed. I didn't feel, um, I, I, I felt so rejected so many times. And having a woman having a woman beside me in bed wasn't even about having sex with her. It was more about the fact that because I have a woman next to me, I feel like a man. I feel secure. I feel loved. I feel accepted. And so I desire that feeling. If she's here, it's because she wants me. If she's here, it's because um, I'm, I, I must be awesome. I must be cool. I must be, I must be something uh, worthy or something valuable, something, you know, it was uh, anything to get, uh, feel affirmed. And, and, and letting go of that was, was the hardest thing because, you know, that's a, that's a physical thing 
that's there and it's real and it's tangible. But I had to renew my mind and start to see these women as not only daughters of you know the Most High, but as sisters, as sisters of mine, and as 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 a, as a human being, as 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 someone with a spirit and a soul and a heart and the damage that I was doing to women and the damage that I was doing to myself just being with them. It, it was all just such a dark, this dark thing, just mixing all of that up. It, it became so dark and, and, you know, as far as love goes and relationships go, I, I had lost complete hope. I've seen so many things, I've done so many things and I've experienced so many things that just made me lose hope in love. It made me lose hope in the fact that I can meet a, a, a woman worth um, uh, worth my time, um, that I could trust, um, that I can just talk with and be honest to, um, that is truly following God, I, you know, that would accept me for my for my faults, um, and and with all my mistakes and and. But just bringing it back around to my wife and meeting her, it was so, it was so beautiful to finally have somebody who, not only loved me as much as I loved them, but wanted the same things and had the same values and had the same visions and desires and, more than anything, spoke to my core. You know, as men, we have dreams and we have visions and we have goals, and their coals just burning inside of us just at the pit of our stomach, just at the core of who we are. And we need somebody who's gonna come along and breathe into those coals so that the fire may be ignited. Apparently my video got cut off on the last take there, so I left off on just talking about how my wife came along and spoke to the deepest desires of my heart and my goals, and she kind of breathed on them to make that fire ignited again. And I was talking about how so many people before just come along and, and just splashed water on those coals and just discouraged me and, and, and made me lose hope in myself. And um, a lot of it has to do with not really sticking in the Word of God like, like I knew I should be. And so I just want to leave you all with that, um, you know, my life is not perfect, and there's so many times that I fall and I still struggle, but knowing that God is in control, knowing that He is the Prince of Peace, and knowing that He is for me and not against me, and knowing that we're more than conquerors, but we're victorious because Jesus Christ died on the cross for us, and knowing that we can walk into any situation and we're not alone, but we have our Father in Heaven that is looking down on us and with us, and and just ready to comfort us is just something that you can hold on to in this hard life that we live. I want to encourage you all to really seek God for what He has for you. He's made everyone so unique and so many different talents out there and so many different callings and visions and dreams that he has for each and every single one of us and it only comes from spending time with him and it only comes from being still and listening to his voice and it only comes from you earnestly seeking his his voice and his heart and his character and who he is and it's a lot of just sitting with him and not saying a word but just sitting with him I I have so many plans and visions, and this is just uh, one of the first videos that I'm putting out, and I'm hoping to share so much more with you all so that I can let you in on all the marvelous things God has done for me in my life and my wife, and um, I just want to encourage you all, if you're in drugs, if you're an alcoholic, if you're finding yourself sleeping around with women, if you find yourself in pride, if you find yourself in, um, in envy, in, in covetousness, or in um, pornography, or in any bad habits that you're walking in,
God is the solution. God is the answer. It sounds so simple, and it is, but God is not simple. God is, is more complex than anything that we could ever imagine. For us to understand God is going to take more than a lifetime. It'll take all of eternity and some. And if you think that that's such a cheesy answer and that I'm just full of it, then, then you haven't given God a chance. And I just ask you, brothers and sisters, to give Him that chance and see what He can do for your life. But really give it to Him and leave it in His hands and see what He can multiply and bless you with. And so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I, I don't really know um, if that covers it all. I'm just going to stop now before the video camera stops on me again. And um, I'm hoping to put out some more videos. So may you all be blessed and may you all, may you all be well. May you all be well. All right. Thank you for spending time in my home. I'll see you all soon.